Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we'll be talking to a national thought leader about the future of podcasting. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, today's topic is one that's near and dear to my heart. It's podcasting, but I have to admit, I was late to the game. About four years ago, my daughter, who's my vice president, says, Daddy, we need to start a podcast division. And I laughed at her and I said, Sarah, who's listening to podcasts? And she says, my generation, all those young people jogging, listening to something, it's not music, Dad. Well, now uh, our podcast division, our broadcast division, makes up more than 50% of the income of this company. So you don't have to sell me on podcasting. But I want to talk about the future of podcasting with a man who knows a little a thing or two, literally wrote the book on it, uh, Larry Roberts with Readily Random Media. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. This is a great opportunity and a phenomenal facility. Thank you. You're very kind. So uh, you're also the editor of a national newsletter called Podfest Messenger. So yes. uh, you, you, you've got your finger on the pulse of the podcast industry. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been in the podcasting space now for about seven years. So I, I've evolved through that process. But as, a, as of late, yeah, I, I go on national speaking tours as far as podcasting is concerned and heavily involved in the space itself. So let's talk about the industry, kind of the history of the industry and where you see it going. Which, how did podcasting start? Podcasting started actually back in 2004 was the first quote unquote official podcast. Now, of course, there were some radio type shows that were online, but they weren't necessarily considered podcasts. Uh, and the word podcast came to light. It's kind of a portmanteau of taking pod from the iPod or the Apple iPod uh, to cast or broadcast and put the two together. We have the term podcasting. And it was early. It was an early adoption from the iPod because it made content portable and people love the portability of the content, and it started to take off there. Uh, now today, podcasting has evolved to be a variety of different types of media. Although some of your old school podcasters are still married to the fact that it's not a podcast if it's not distributed via RSS feed, but the fact is, I mean, the community, the public has spoken, and a podcast is now on YouTube, it's video, it's audio, it's a combination of the two, it's short clips on TikTok or, or Instagram Reels or whatever it may be. Sure. Podcasts are everywhere. Yeah, and, and they're getting numbers uh, that uh, beat commercial television networks like uh, Joe Rogan. I, I haven't looked at his numbers recently, but doesn't he reach more people than ABC or NBC? Oh, definitely. He has millions of listens per episode. And that's mind boggling for a lot of podcasters who are really just trying to get the average is about 175 downloads per episode for a podcaster. So if you take your average podcaster and compare him to Joe Rogan, there's light years of difference there. So, you know, Joe managed to leverage his experience in the media and the the fact that he's a massive, massive comedian. There aren't many comedians that sell out stadiums like Joe Rogan does. So he's already got a fan base and he's already got a platform that's allowed him to grow exponentially within the podcasting space. Well, you have a very pod, uh, very popular podcast yourself. We're going to sh show a, uh, an, an image on the screen. Uh, tell us more about your, your show. Yeah, my show came together. You know, uh, we were talking kind of in the green room before the show came on, and I had mentioned that I found sobriety just eight years ago. And after getting sober, thanks to Inner Health, which is a facility here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex that's amazing, uh, I needed a creative outlet. So podcasting, I stumbled on it through, well, go figure, Joe Rogan. And I listened to an episode, and what I heard just blew my mind. Having that kind of freedom, that kind of creativity, 
in a space that I have total control over, I, I was hooked immediately and I started my first podcast. And since then, I've gone through a few shows, but Readily Random is where we ended up. And over the years, it's evolved into an entrepreneurial based show where I have thought leaders and entrepreneurs and biz, small to mid sized business owners that come on and talk about some of the struggles they had and some of the lessons they learned along the way to help other business owners maybe circumvent some of those problems. Yes, and you've also written an Amazon best selling book. We're going to put that on the screen. Uh, tell us about the book and the popularity of the book. What, what, what do people learn in the book? The book is a very basic introduction to podcasting. A lot of times people will look at podcasting and go, man, I want to do that, but the technology and the concept, it, it confuses me and it scares me. One plus one equals podcast came into, came into being because I wanted to simplify the process. So that's exactly what I did. And having an analytics background, I kind of used a mathematical equation, simplifying that equation of podcasting success. It's a bit wordy, but, <laughs> but it gets the point across. I just wanted to simplify the entire process, and that's what you're going to learn through One Plus One Equals Podcast. I'm sure there's people watching this right now who have been tempted or somebody said, oh, you need to start a podcast. And, you know, I run into those people all the time, and they say, but, but what would I talk about? What, what, what is the value of a podcast? Why does somebody want to start a podcast? You know, a, a podcast can be a variety of, of, of avenues for you. If you have a hobby that you're interested in, interested in, you can spread the love of that hobby through a podcast. If you're involved in your community, you can reach more members of that community with a podcast. And if you have a business, it can grow your business with by branding your podcast with your business. You can reach your ideal listeners that are involved in your particular niche that your business addresses. And from those listeners, you can now find your ideal clients as well. So there's benefits to podcasting regardless of whether or not it's an independent podcast or it's a branded high-end corporate podcast. And a lot of people will make excuses and say, well, I don't have time to do a podcast. Uh, show prep can be as much or as little as you want. Am I right? 100%. You, you, you don't have to do tons of research leading up to the podcast. Now, I would recommend you know who your guest is if you even have guests. You don't even have to have guests if you have a podcast. You can have a solo podcast where you can go on, give bits of information regarding whatever it is, the topic that you're an expert or a thought leader in, and move on. But if you do have guests, minimal preparation is really required. Just know what they're coming on your show to do and understand their background a bit and then write down maybe a few questions. Yeah, and one of the things that I tell people is that we're going from a day of broadcasting to kind of narrow casting. So if you wanna, I guess they call it get rich in your niche, you could create a very small niche that, uh, that you own and maybe you're the only person out there talking about this thing. I think that's one of the key factors there, Jeff, is finding a niche that represents your subject matter expertise. You know, if you're a, if you own a landscaping company, why not start a podcast about landscaping? You can even create an environment by recording the episodes while you're doing some of the work. Maybe you're out in a garden, maybe you're, maybe you're, you're, uh, trimming some shrubs, whatever it may be, have some of that in the background to create that ambiance of whatever it is that you're doing and then brand it for your business. Now suddenly you're reaching more people, the people that are already your clients, you're establishing a relationship with them and you're extending the understanding of each other. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, I can see why you're so successful. And you've had a, a, an honor bestowed upon you. You're gonna be one of the keynotes at a, a large uh, podcast uh, event. T tell everybody about that. Yeah, PodFest Origins is coming up November 4th through the 6th. It's going to be in Tampa, Florida at the Amelie Arena. It's where the hockey team plays and it's it's a massive event. It's going to be huge. It's actually a dual event with the Florida Blockchain, Blockchain Association. Say that five times fast. <laughs> but it's a combined event where we'll be doing podcasting and we'll be learning about the blockchain and how to invest in Bitcoin as well. So it's going to be an amazing opportunity for everybody to take in a variety of different content. Wow. Larry, you've been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back again soon. We're going to end with your website, easy to remember, readilyrandom.com. The great Larry Roberts. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Jeff. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time.